Good morning, guys. Brian back here with Vet Source, uh, continuing on day three of our teardown of this 1991 Corvette salvage uh, parts car that we picked up for parts. Uh, today, real quick, what I'm going to be going through is removal of the radiator cooling pod assembly that uh, encapsulates uh, your AC condenser, your radiator fan assembly, and actually serves as a foundational base for the um, air cleaner assembly. So we're going to get cranking on this pretty quick. Uh, this again requires just a minimum of tools to get in here and work on this. So it won't take me too long. Uh, first off, we're going to start. We're just going to take our bolts out, attaching bolts for the uh, air cleaner housing. This is where your air cleaner, your fresh air vent comes through. Uh, everything comes through right here. So out of these three bolts, one of them is, or two of them are through bolts. And then the one in the center is it's a shorter bolt that goes into the housing. It doesn't go all the way through into the actual radiator core support. You can see how those are longer than the other one right there. So we get those out of there, get them out of the way. And then what you want to do is disconnect it from your throttle body housing. Save that, set that to the side. And then you'll find you can actually go ahead and take this out separately. And then that whole assembly will come out in one piece. So we'll set that to the side. And we can get access to the radiator cover. Uh, and this is where I was talking about the two outer bolts go through into those nut plates into there. So what we've got up top here is we've got a Torx bolt that we need to get to here and here. That one's out already. we got a 15 right here, a 15 right here. Um, and then on the other side will be the same thing. So let me get uh, the rest of my tools ready here and I'll be back in just a second and we'll get cranking on pulling this upper cover off of here real quick. Be right back guys. All right, I'm back with our tools set up here and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and try to get these lines out of the way as I drop my tools everywhere. So we've got this one cracked open already. This one on the bottom is gonna take a little bit more persuasion because it didn't want to come out of there so instead of destroying the unit first we'll try to get that out and what we did here is this is the only thing that's kind of in your way when you want to get to these bolts here so what we're going to do is we pull that up just a little bit just loose enough to get that out and then I'm going to take care of this Torx bolt and just so you know that Torx bolt's not supposed to be in there that should be a, a 13 or actually a 10 millimeter in there so whoever had this apart before put the wrong hardware back in it again, which is not a huge deal, but something I always notice when I'm going, working on these things. So we're gonna get that one out of there. I'm having to use my manual tool right now or go my ratchet, because I can't get my electric impact in there. That one's out. Yeah, those are definitely not the right ones. And then we'll work on this one, one-handed again, guys. I'm gonna use my dominant hand, so that'll help me a little bit there. And we'll get this one out. And since they left the other one out, we don't really have to worry about that one. And this is a coarse thread Torx that they put in here, which didn't really work out very well. So we've got this one loose. Okay. Now you can see already that box is starting to come loose so I can move that there. So I'm gonna have to work on this real quick. And what I'll probably do is, let me grab my 15 millimeter and my heat up, my burns matic real quick guys. So I can heat this up and I'll be back with you in a second so we can get to this one side and start over here. You're right. Okay, we're back again uh, with our burns matic tool. Let's see if we can get a little bit of heat on this fitting so that we can make that work for us. If you've never used one of these before, it's actually a pretty useful tool. And what I'm trying to do is not burn my fiberglass housing there, but it's really not working. So I'm not gonna go too long with this. I'm gonna leave that be. But these are good tools to 
help you get bolts that want to be stuck in a combination with that PBT blaster that I showed you in the video yesterday I did of disassembling the front end. I got a link there above my head on that one. So this is going to be our last ditch effort here. Try to get that off of there um, without damaging it. Oh, just a second. Let me see. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see what'll happen here. I may have to put this down for just a second. Let me go ahead and break this nut loose, guys, real quick, and I'm gonna come right back. Okay, for the time being, that fitting has decided it does not want to go anywhere, so I've already galled it enough, and you will find sometimes on these uh, liquid lines that they do want to freeze up on you. So I'm gonna leave it alone. Good thing is, GM and their infinite wisdom, you can see they actually made this cutout on the side of the box, so we can actually get the box out without having to remove the line for the moment. So I can work around it. So right now I'm gonna grab my 13 mils, get these out of here get those out of the way and somebody was kind enough to not put the other bolt back in there the 10 millimeter that normally would be there so we're gonna get that got that one done as is often the case when they take these apart sometimes they won't put them back together exactly properly of course they put that one in too tight so I'll have to get the impact out on that one and then what we're gonna do here these are the fan relays right here so we'll have to uh, get those out of the way. We just grab our 13 millimeter temporarily. See if we can get enough grab in here to hand wrench this out of the way. Let's see, I may not be able to. Of course, okay, my tools are working against me today. So give me a second to go get my big impact, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, let's get after it now with the proper tools. So first we're gonna get these fan relays out of the way. That would be an incorrect fastener right there. And then we get this one here. You can kind of see the difference. This one has got that built-in little head to it flare that keeps it in place. That other one was just a standard hardware bolt. Then we're gonna get to this one here. And that one's out. Okay. And then we'll get to these last couple of 10 mils here. May have to get that one manually. There's that one. And let's see if I can lift this up enough. There we go. Well, actually, I don't need to take it off. So, yeah, what we'll do is we'll get that. So that way that bracket isn't in my way. as the hood falls on my head. Okay. So we've got that corner bracket there. We're gonna save our hardware for our customer here that's coming by to get this. And then we're gonna see how we do as far as getting that out of there, that upper part. Oh, well, and I, of course, forgot to get set up. There's two more lines I'm going to take off. I'm going to take off the overflow, and I need to take off the transmission line real quick. So let me go grab my tools, guys. Once again, I'll be right back. Okay, we got the right tools for that, so we're going to pull that hose out of there. Just held on in place with a clamp. And then we're going to go ahead and take off our... 13 millimeter, this is one of our transmission cooler lines. This goes back into the radiator to cool the transmission fluid. Um, for those of you who didn't, weren't aware, transmission fluid tends to get very hot. So what it does is it actually transfers it back into the two side tanks of the radiator so that it can be cooled up as well, cooled back down again. So it keeps it in operating temperature. So it's kind of some of the neat engineering things that they've done with cars keep them going okay so that one's removed we got that out of the way let's see this should barring any other unforeseen complications 
pull straight up for me. Get that past there. Get that over there. And there we go. As the hood falls on me again. Don't try this at home, boys and girls. I have many years of experience of Corvette hoods falling on my head. <laughs> so I've gotten used to um, knowing when they're coming down and kicking them back up just at the right time. Before it hurts me. Sometimes. So what I'm dealing with right now, and what you're seeing is, see how that's loose right there? You always want to look at that when you're working on your cars. Guys, I should just, as an aside, on your C4s, this should have a locking tab in it. It doesn't have it anymore. So what's happening, that's why the hood keeps falling every time I put pressure on it. So, what I'm doing now, there we go. Get that pass there. Put that tab back in there, like that. There we go, okay. So, looking at it here, you can see the way this box is constructed. It kind of flares and goes down that way. Now, for my sanity, they didn't put the three, the bolts that will go back in here. Yes, they're actually three seven millimeters that go down in that corner right there that they did not put back in, which a lot of people don't because they're just kind of a bear to get to. So luckily for us, they weren't back in there. So what I'm gonna do for now, since I can't get that released yet, I'm gonna pull this out of the way. This won't really hurt it that much. And pull the radiator up just a little bit. Probably disconnected over there. And then that way I can pull the lower box out and get everything done. This is actually part of the lower box. This is the lower half of the assembly. I need to take one bolt out there. I see that they left in. So let me grab that one real quick. Okay, that one's out. This one here. I'll loosen that one already. And that's just straight water, so we're not worried about that coming out on the ground. I did check that before. Helps me water my lawn in this lovely Texas heat. So we'll get this out of the way. This is probably still bolted in there. So let me make a few um, a few little movements of our radiator here because I can't do this one handed. And I'll get back with you and show you this lower half coming out of here guys. I'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm back here with our final pieces out of the way I think so we'll see how successful I can be at getting this out one thing you'll do want to do is go ahead and remove that connector from your fan motors there and I'm just gonna basically pull straight up and out with this and there you go that is the cooling pod removed from the Corvette you can see from the backside how those fans are installed in there um, that would be the way it's sitting in the car. Fan assemblies here. I don't know why they painted them red. I guess they thought it was fancy. That's where your lower air dam would attach, right there in the front, that directs air up into the radiator because it's coming through this funnel shaped section here to draw it through as it goes in. And of course, there's your upper assembly as it's placed on the top there. So that's the whole cooling pod assembly in one big piece. Uh, you can see here there's that skid plate impact bar that we took down the other day or yesterday in that other video I did of disassembling the front suspension. There's a link to that uh, at the top of the video. You can see that if you didn't check that out already. So that's going to wrap it up for us today as far as the cooling system. Again, if you check back with me tomorrow, I will probably have started the process of getting this rear bumper off the car. Now, if you're looking at this carefully, and again, if you didn't see the first video I took of removing the front bumper assembly, which there's a link up at the top of the video for that one, <clears throat> you can see that a lot of the nuts were visible on that. If you're looking at this rear bumper, you can tell none of the bolts are visible on this. So the question is, how are we gonna get this jigsaw puzzle taken apart? So uh, be sure to check me out tomorrow. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see the update on how I get this off of here. And we'll go from there, guys, okay?
Now I'm going to go back in and drink some water because it's already 100 degrees outside and I want to thank everybody for watching if you stuck it out to the end. Talk to you guys later.